So before you begin to roast me in the comments about how I made this doghouse, um, just know that this is the first time that I had ever made something this big and the first time I had ever used uh, SketchUp to design it. And you'll see at the end of the video um, how it's disassembled and why it's designed this way. Uh, and a lot of these ideas that I had came up with on how to build it, I got from uh, two YouTube videos, one on building a shed and the other one about making lap joints. And I'll post the links to those videos in the comments. Um, hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy Daddy's video too. I first started this project by measuring and cutting all the treated 2x4 pieces that would go under the subfloor of the deck pieces. After squaring it up, I pre-drilled and then fastened them with two and a half inch spack screws made for treated lumber. When it came to setting the two by fours in the center, I just measured from the last two by four and then pre-drilled the screws to hold the board in place before it was fastening it. Once the subfloor is built, I laid out all the deck boards on the top to get a pretty much the same overhang on all the sides. I straightened them out and then popped a line in the center of the 2x4 below so that way the one and a quarter inch screws would go in the center of the 2x4. In order to get the deck boards squared up, I'd had to use a cheater board to hold some of the boards together in order to fasten them, but it worked out. Once I had the deck board secured to the bottom frame, I popped a line along the edges and then used my skill saw to cut a even straight line on all the sides. And then once I cut the sides off, I came in back with a router to finish it off. Um, and then it was the end of the day. And I was really happy because I was able to upgrade my saw with a Diablo blade. I, heard a lot, I read a lot of reviews about it and it really seemed to work well. Uh, when it came to the walls, I again cut all the boards to length and then assembled the walls on the floor. Um, one thing I do... Uh, suggest or one thing I did learn was I had got some of this wood from a guy who had donated it to us it was an old wheelchair ramp and the wood was a little warped so it made it difficult to square it up in some cases um, like right now I had to pry it up just to make sure that it was flush on the corners that was the, that was the most difficult thing to deal with because I was trying to get accurate measurements but at the end of the day, it worked out and I got it to work. When it came to cutting the top of the six by six that would make the angle for the roof, I did have to watch a few YouTube videos to try and figure out how to do this. Um, I think I got it right. And once I kind of figured it out, it became super simple. I used a saw to cut through the top of the board and then I had to flip the board over and cut the other side. After cutting both sides, then I came back and cut the remainder off um, with a handsaw to finish the cut, but it turned out pretty good. After getting all the walls assembled, I didn't like the way this edge of the 6x6 looked, so I ended up routing all the four corners of the outside of the doghouse. I think it actually turned out pretty good, and then I called it a day. So I just got into uh, start working on my project here, the doghouse. I was going to make the... Uh, the frame of the roof and get the pitch and all that so we can get all the material done in order and my brother called me and he said that he had my birthday present which is pretty cool because I was actually looking at this at Home Depot today that's awesome thank you bro got the roof built when I cut these boards for the angle of the roof. I just used a 27 degree angle on top and then measured down to 36 and 5 8 and used the exact same angle for the bottom. And then I just split that angle at one and a half inches. So to make things easy here, I went to Home Depot and purchased this cutting guide for the skill saw and it really did help a lot. It made cutting this plywood straight really easy. After that, we marked the window for the back dual fan unit, and I used the jigsaw to connect all the cuts, and then came back with a skill saw to straighten out all the cuts, and then used the jigsaw again to get to the corners where I couldn't reach. So 
So right here I'm making the front porch roof of the doghouse. And I had actually watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to make something like this. And one of the videos that I watched was by Paul Ricaldi, I believe his name was. And he talked about how to make these lap joints and use them for gates and things and then um, use some glue and make these joints really strong. I really did enjoy making these. And a lot of the tools that I'm using right here I had purchased off the internet or Craigslist or wherever maybe three weeks before so being able to use them was really exciting. After making all the lap joint cuts, then I laid out the frame, used some wood glue, squared it up, and then pre-drilled and used one inch spack screws to fasten it all together. Whenever it came to making the center 2x4s that would go in the center of the roof, I marked the angle on the side of the 2x4 and just used a saw as my guide, got as close as I could to the angle to make it match, and then tightened it up and made the cut. So something I learned from watching YouTube videos was how to use a speed square to make the first initial straight cut. If it wasn't for YouTube, I don't know if I even could have made this doghouse. I learned so much just in preparation to make this thing. I mean, you could probably do brain surgery by just watching YouTube videos. <laughs> and I'm not even lying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So once the lap joints were cut, I glued them together and then pre-drilled and screwed them in with one inch back screws. I came in and toenailed the top of the boards, pre-drilled and then screwed them in. Also. Right here, you s I did a uh, rough build just to make sure that everything would be squared up and the measurements were right. Um, as you can see, that's the screw that holds the top of the roof to the 6x6. Six so the next day was actually a Saturday and I came in early and started the siding. So from the bottom I ripped a cedar plank one inch wide so that way it would sit behind the first plank on the bottom and the angle would be consistent. And let me tell you something, this nail gun really came in handy because I used it to tack the boards and then come back and pre-drill and then use the spack screws to fasten it to the wall. So the reason why I didn't use this level that was sitting there was because the garage was a little bit on a grade toward the front of the house and using a level would just throw me off. So I just used the measuring tape and then did the pre-drilling and screwing after that. On the third plank up, I was able to use this jig that I created to make things go a lot quicker. And it came out really good. Once the cedar siding was done, I went in and drilled the corners of the window out, then used a level to mark the tops of the holes and along the sides, and then came in with the jigsaw and just cut them out. A lot of these tools that I had purchased, the, saw, the, the miter saw and this jigsaw and the handsaw were all purchased off Craigslist. I got them all for about 200 bucks. It wasn't bad. When it came to the window, I made my cut sills made of one by four, spray painted it, and then used some caulking along the edges. I finished this window um, last night, and pretty much I think I made a mistake though because I s cut the boards from this point here to this point here, and I should have overlapped this board right here so that way water couldn't get in here, but um, yeah, that, that cedar tan, and I did all the, the cuts right here, the edges, there, all right here. Whenever it's installed, I'm going to set it in here and put this flashing over the top so that the water won't go up in behind and get in between here where this plywood's going to be. And then once I get the window in there, I'm going to tack it in there and then seal it off with that caulking all the way around the edges. When setting the plexiglass, I laid it out, scored it with a razor knife, cut it with a jigsaw, and then set it on here, pre-drilled, removed it, cleaned off the excess dust, 
came back with a screwdriver to hand tighten them because I didn't want this glass to break. And then after I set all the screws and I came along the edges and then used some silicone. Turned out pretty good, I think. One thing I did forget to do whenever I ordered the material for the roof was I forgot to order the screws in the same color with the roof. So I just went to Home Depot, got some regular metal roofing screws with the little seal, and then got a can of red spray paint and spray painted them so that way they would match with the roof. And it actually turned out pretty good. I really liked the way it looked. Now whenever it came to setting the top of the roof, I didn't like the way this edge left the plywood visible. So I laid out the um, metal roof on the ground and then flattened this one little ridge line right here that you see with one of the hammers that I got. And I think it turned out really good. I'm pretty sure his neighbors didn't appreciate me hammering so much, but you know. And, and it turned out really nice, I think. It, it totally hid that whole piece of plywood on the front of the doghouse. So when it came to the roofing ridge, the same problem I had was I could see the plywood. So I cut it an inch in depth in the very top of the uh, metal. And then in order to get this bend right here, I used a two by four to bend it over the corner and then used a single roofing screw to secure it in the center. And then it was on to staining all the siding for the house. And there it is, it's completed. And I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. it took a lot of time, but it didn't, I think in the end it turned out really well. So the reason why I designed it this way was because it was going to be easier for me to leave all my tools in the garage and then come in after work, work on it, and then once it was fully built, um, disassemble it and then move it to its permanent position in the backyard because it was going to be pretty much going through a three-foot gate. Um, once it was set up, then we went behind and did all the caulking and sealed it up um, to make sure that it was waterproof. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed doing this project, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Thanks, guys.